So the immune system is a whole chapter in your book. We're going to spend not the time we could, um, definitely a chance for extra credit to do a little bit more, especially with the specifics of innate and adaptive immunity. That's actually the first thing I want to do is tell you the two main category categories or branches of the immune system. Remember the immune system is the cells, tissues, other structures that is involved in keeping pathogens from getting in your body and then destroying them once they're in there. There's two broad types that of immunity, ways your body can do this. One is called innate immunity. You know, if something is innate, it's kind of natural. You're born with it. Um, this is non-specific. So it's just um, not distinguishing one threat from another. It is killing things. Talk a little bit more about it in a second. Um, the other type is adaptive. This type is um, acquired. It is adaptive to specific threats. So it is specific. And going to be more variable in different people then. Okay, so let's go through each of these a little bit more. First, innate. So again, this is doesn't change throughout like your age, um, you know, with some exceptions, present at birth, um, right. One example, I just want to actually show some pictures and then move on to other types. One example is physical barriers. So this is all tissue types you've seen before, um, and structures. So physical barriers is an important type of innate immunity skin with the stratified squamous epithelium, multiple layers with keratin on top, um, skin the integumentary system contains hairs that protect as well. Um, and then sebaceous glands are those secretions that um, are oily and flush away microorganisms um, and actually are antibacterial as well. So that's skin. A lot of your body has skin, right? There's also mucous membranes, cutaneous membrane up here, mucous membrane. Um, that is spelled wrong. There we go. So mucous membranes are located right throughout all of your internal passageways that are facing actually at the outside of the body, exposed to the outside of the body. So reproductive system, respiratory system, digestive system. And this is um, important for producing mucus and the little cilia that can then get stuff out. So those are two types of physical, two very important, like the two types of physical barriers. Um, okay, let me erase that. Now, innate immunity also includes a bunch of cells and other stuff. So we've got phagocytes, remember those? Those cells that can um, do phagocytosis, which is a type of endocytosis. So there were, there were three cell types we talked about, neutrophils, specialized for bacteria, eosinophils, um, especially important for parasitic infections, and then macrophages. Macrophages are monocytes that have left circulation and are now located in peripheral tissues and phagocytose, phagocytose debris, pathogens, old red blood cells, et cetera, um, but pathogens in, in tissues. Okay. Now we've got one type of lymphocyte called natural killer cells. These are lymphocytes. The other white blood cells, lymphocytes, remember leukocytes is the name for white blood cells. Lymphocytes are one type of leukocyte. So natural killer cells can recognize other 
and they are not specific, but they recognize signals um, like glycoproteins attached to membrane receptor, membrane proteins on the cell and can tell if a cell is from your own body or has abnormal foreign markers. This can sometimes be cancer um, cells or your own cells that are infected with virus. Um, and so these are providing nonspecific but important immunity. Um, that's the main types of innate immunity. There's other important factors, so like inflammation that brings all these cells to a site because of the increased blood flow, um, fever, increase in body temperature meant to increase metabolism and destroy pathogens. Um, there's this um, a couple other mechanisms. I'll, I'll write them here and then you can look into them more if you want. Interferons um, are chemicals, complement system. And I think that's all. Okay, so these are kind of, it's not that they're not important. And inflammation and fever are definitely relevant um, to our body's function and, and how maintaining homeostasis, fighting, fighting thing, foreign things can disrupt homeostasis. Other body systems have to correct then for um, adapt to something like fever. Okay. Adaptive immunity is again specialized. So this is protecting against threats that your body has learned to are foreign. So this requires learning. Um, it is requiring acquiring immunity to something specific. And when I mean something specific, I mean an antigen. An antigen is a marker on a cell or or not, it doesn't have to be a cell, could be um, a, a virus has an antigen that our bodies can detect. So instead of just being like other versus self, right? Natural killer selves, self versus other. That, that's all it can do. It's recognizing specific things to do that, but it's not recognizing specific antigens. This is learning new, learning new things. Before the body didn't know this antigen was so bad, now it's able to learn that yes, it is so bad. Um, so it can acquire this via two different mechanisms, either active, which is, in, is the more, um, probably more important, happens more often, um, um, which is after exposure to the ant antigen. So again, this is that learning. Um, this could either be natural. So you are exposed to antigens in your environment. Like I get um, COVID from the air around me, or it could be artificially acquired. So a vaccine that gives you, that um, contains the antigen itself or RNA for the that later then produces the protein. Antigens are proteins. So natural or acquired, or sorry, natural or um, artificial. It also can be passive. This means instead of being exposed to the antigen, you acquire the antibodies themselves from somewhere else. Now this could be naturally from like your mother when you were in the placenta or from breast milk where you gain these antibodies or it could be artificial um, administration of antibodies. Not always lasting in that case. So hopefully big picture of the difference between these two um, types of immunity. 
Last thing to do is tell you about the cells of the adaptive response. Not going to do them justice. They are all lymphocytes, which again are types of um, that, that trigger that learn this adaptive part. Types of leukocytes. Three types of lymphocytes. Um, T lymphocytes. These are going to secrete chemical messengers. There are B lymphocytes. These are in charge of antibody production. Obviously important. Um, B lymphocytes mature into plasma cells, and that's the third type. Plasma cells are a type of B cell that actually secrete antibodies specifically, secrete them opposed to just um, produce them and express them like on the cell surface. These are secreting antibody into the bloodstream, which is helpful to kind of get that message out there into the blood. Those are the three types. Um, one other difference between them, T cells are produced in the thymus, B cells in the red bone marrow. Um, and there's a whole lot more about this in your book. But again, the important part about them is they are generating immune responses to specific antigens. So for example, B lymphocytes recognize antigens it, they encounter and produce antibodies that are specific to that antigen. That's their job. The plasma cell would be when that B cell starts secreting that, that certain antibody um, in response to the immunity that's been, been gained previously. Right, so that's the awesome thing about this. You can have time pass and your body can mount an immune response more quickly when it encounters that same thing again. Definitely an extra credit opportunity to do more with either innate or adaptive immunity because this is scratching the surface. Learning check for you here. <laughs>